Do join us, 800-433-8850. Send us your email to drshow at wamu.org. Khaled Hosseini is with me. His new book, A Thousand Splendid Sons, has just been released today. And already the reviews are pouring in, uh, talking about this book as being even better than The Kite Runner. And it's hard uh, for those of you who've read only The Kite Runner to imagine how anything could be really better. But I'll tell you, this is such a story. I fell in love with it. Um, We talked in the first segment, Khaled, about Mariam who was born in the 26th year of the last king of Afghanistan's 40-year reign. What was life like then for a woman as compared to when your second protagonist, Layla, was born nearly 20 years later? Well, you know, it kind of depends where we're talking about. If it was if we're talking about an urban place like Kabul, um, things would have been pretty good. Um, Kabul has always been more liberal, more progressive, and um, had had a large number of professional women, women who worked um, as physicians, as, do- as lawyers, as worked in the government. Um, 70% of the teaching force was made up of women. Women were college students and so on. Um, in the countryside, um, the life of women has been pretty much the same, fairly static, for centuries. In the countryside, the the area is ruled by, especially the south and the east of Afghanistan, is ruled by very conservative tribal leaders who oppose female autonomy. And so Taliban-style um, oppression of women in, in, in those areas predates the birth of the Taliban for years. In those areas, women were, you know, forbidden from working. Um, They rarely went to school beyond um, the age of 12. They usually were forced to marriage at a young age. Um, They didn't have a right to work, and they basically were confined to their home. Um, So two very different Mm. um, style of living for women, Mm. depending on on where you, wh- which part of the country you're looking at. Do you and believe so uh, there is a certain hatred or is it fear of women? It's very complex, Diane. It's very complex. Um, in, I'll, I'll explain it this way. In, in tribal, co- very conservative tribal culture, and, and I want to stress that this is not in all of Afghanistan, but in in the very tribal parts of Afghanistan. A woman symbolizes the honor of of her family. And a man, um, um, his whole persona, (coughs) his whole public image, depends on the behavior of the women of his family. It's central to how he perceives himself, how he is perceived by his community. Honor is is, is the most delicate, the most sensitive and sacred possession he has. And so, (coughs) the women have to be protected from being dishonored by outside. But in addition, um, those men feel that women are are both psychologically and emotionally immature when compared to men. And additionally, that they are hypersexual beings, uh, that if you did not control them, there would be sexual anarchy. And so they're not only protected from outside, but they have to be controlled and pretty much protected from themselves. And so this has led to the practice of seclusion of Prada, which is basically uh, the, de- the way to deal with this is that women are confined to their homes um, and never seen by strangers and never have any interactions with, with males outside of their own immediate family. And if they do go outside, they're in the company of a male relative and they're shrouded from head to toe so that they're not seen by strange men. And when they walk down the street, they have to be very quiet and they can't speak loudly, and they can't laugh, and they can't wear high heels or have jewelry that jingles. And of course, this puts severe limitations on a woman. It, you know, it, it limits her access to health care. In, in those regions, maternal mortality rate is sky high. 
in some of those regions a woman dies every 30 minutes from either childbirth or some pregnancy related issue it limits her her ability to work and uh, it denies her a right to education and I think it's a horrible thing for Afghanistan and 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 this is not this is I think one of the central challenges facing this regime how do you bring women back into the fold how do you give them a voice in an environment that is often hostile to women and opposes the autonomy of women.